I get in a cab, <laughs> and the cabbie goes, uh, so are you up here for the festival? I said, uh, yeah, yeah, and he goes, what you doing? I said, I'm a comedian, and he goes, ah, I'll tell you who I like, I'll tell you who I like, that Brendan Burns. <laughs> For the first 10 years of my career, I was a very, very angry young man, and I, uh, I think I used to... Uh, I was doing Mark Maron's podcast, and, and we both agreed that if we couldn't storm the gig with our jokes and be the guy that killed the most, we'd be the guy that went down in flames. Because so long as everyone thought, that guy's a fucking asshole, you'd be going, great, at least I got to them. Uh, thank you so much for coming out tonight. This is a bit of a tweener show. We're doing something a bit different. Uh, it does split a room. It's Lads may be a bit disappointed. There's not going to be loads of butt-fucking. There'll be some butt-fucking. Don't worry, fellas, but uh, we've said the whole thing to music, and uh, we hope that after a while you won't notice it, and then at the end it'll become apparent. I don't want to overspell <laughs> it. <laughs> you know, we talk about comedians that don't censor themselves, and I used to think that was just let out all your shit. Let out the worst aspects of you, and then that'll be cathartic, and you know people will laugh. And, and modern catharsis seems to just mean quick fix. But really, not censoring yourself would be also letting out your the positive aspects to your character too. So I'm just trying to be as whole as I can. <laughs> You guys are the best yet. <laughs> How can you say that after abusing an audience? <laughs> you guys are amazing. You reference some of the up and coming comedians that are, that are on the circuit today and... Oh, it's not even up and coming comedians. It's uh, Peter Philia's hack. There it is. You know, uh, just by saying, oh, fuck the kid, doesn't make you Chris Morris. Chris Morris did it brilliantly 15 years ago. And I think uh, Reg Hunter said on the Green Room series with Paul Provenza in, in the States, he goes, uh, you know, once, once in a while a comedian comes along and ruins a generation. And for my generation it was Bill Hicks. And we all tried to be Bill Hicks. And none of us were. We weren't that well read. We weren't that deep or smart. And uh, I work a great deal towards be, just being myself these days because that's all right. I'm not bad at it. And but in England, Chris Morris. Chris Morris ruined a generation. Because it's obvious kids were about 15, 16, not really emotionally developed enough to fully understand what he was doing, and just went after the one thing that he did, which was satirizing the media. He also went after pedophiles too. Pretty damn hard. Pretty damn hard. And he got me. When I watched it the first time, it was genius. That brass eye special was genius. First time I watched it, I was like, I don't know about this man, I don't know. And then you had to watch it twice and you went, oh, he got me. He got me, what gold. And then a whole bunch of kids went, well, I, I want to be an edgy comic. Well, that's what I'm doing. I'll say, I fucked a kid. And I'm satirizing the media for your And you go, no, go out and interview a pedophile and get him to admit that it's a form of racism. Then you're doing the whole picture. One time during an afternoon nap, she shook me awake with a immediate urgency and gravitas and just, and you can't even tell whether she's asleep or awake because her eyes are wide open and you don't really know until the bizarre shit starts happening. <laughs> and she shakes me awake and she goes, you could be a canoe instructor at night. <laughs> <laughs> no one need ever know. <laughs> Except for your shoulders. Aww. One time in America, late at night, she's out, comatose, dead to the world. One of those late night American ads comes on and says, one in five American women don't know how to read a pregnancy test. Eyes still closed, she sat bolt upright and went, that's the most depressing statistic I've ever heard. <laughs> that means one in five American women is a moron and breeding unknowingly. Do you think now that you're going to see another comic ruin the next generation. It happens. Someone comes along and is so starkly original and so, so innovative that, you know, they have a endless imitators. Izzard had it. 
you know. But his art was derivative too. Everyone's derivative. But then there's just, and generally, most guys, particularly guys that start, particularly guys that are starting young, you know, I started young, most of them trying to emulate their heroes for the first eight years. So, they'll get through it. You know, they're not going to be like that forever. Because after a while, they're going to go, wait a second. I'm going to try something out. I, I'm, yeah, I'm not. I'm not me at all. I just, you know, it'll be like one night when you do you do a particular mannerism, and then you go, wait a second, that wasn't me. I've completely, it's a complete affectation. And then you snap awake, and then you die on your ass for about another two years. Uh, you know, just when you've made it work, pretending to be someone else. <laughs> and then after about ten years, it's pretty smooth sailing. It's a long process. Is it is a long, laborious process. Every now and then, you get a freak. Um, I mean, the other pet peeve I have is white English guys all doing an Alan Partridge impression and calling it irony. They all do it. They, you know, so, no, not they all do it, but loads of them do it. All you've done there is, and then they go, oh, I'm being ironic. No, I call it plagiarism. Don't go putting something as primitive as the Bible in the same category as worshipping the sun. I'm an Australian that has spent the past 12 summers in Scotland. <laughs> if there's a dance that makes it come out, shine my fucking shoes, ladies and gentlemen. When did paedophilia and rape become the new airline food in comedy? Now, the fact of the matter is, nothing makes me walk from a room faster than when a comedian talks about what he doesn't talk about. Because, particularly when a guy's new, and you're like, you don't talk about enough yet to be discussing what you don't talk about. And even though it's a generic subject, I've still heard brilliant routines on airline food to this day. You know, you can write a brilliant routine on anything. So I'm not making a blanket statement that, you know, all jokes of that ilk are going to suck. I'm saying if you're gonna go there, for crying out loud, be original. Don't just say it. And here's why a lesbian threesome is better than a straight threesome. And, um, oh, and by straight threesome, I mean one guy, two straight girls. Obviously not two guys, one girl, because that's against Jesus! <laughs> Girls, all right, you know, a straight threesome with two women, that's every male fantasy, it strokes your, your male ego, but there's also the negative aspects of masculinity attached. You know, because like in a straight threesome, well, if one of the girls goes, oh, lick my clit, they both look at you like the bins need taking out. And just, hmm? Hmm? You're like, well, I guess I'll have to fucking do it. <laughs> Whereas in a lesbian threesome, they can use the word somebody lick my clip. And that's hysterical to me. And I'm glad some of you are laughing. And I'm glad some of you aren't. Because that, uh, you know what? I'm keeping it in. I don't care. I don't care. Because using the word somebody during sex is hilarious to me. <laughs> and you know what? <laughs> the reason I don't care is, well, I've been doing this for 20 years now. So, statistically speaking, I'm the funniest guy in the room. So as far as I'm concerned, if I put forward an idea that I find amusing and you don't laugh, as far as I'm concerned, you've just embarrassed yourselves in front of me. <laughs> I'll be brutally honest, if comedy was entirely up to me and not based upon audience response whatsoever, I would happily get up here and just yell the word sponge for an hour because it amused me in the bath earlier that day. I would, I would, I'd be sponge, come on! This is a And an unge, come on! Sponge. <laughs> when I, no, not when I get it right. That sounds like I'm trying to aim for tears, I'm not. Uh, but when I feel present in the room and I'm wording everything just right, I've got like hair standing on the back of my neck and my eyes are welling up a bit. And so yeah, it is emotional. Um, and it's not a bad emotion either. It's, it's, you know what it is, it's, it's a kind of calm that I've tried to attain for a good 39 years of my life.
thank you. I know it's a bit different. It splits the room, I'm sure. If you like it, please tell your friends. If you didn't, shut your fucking mouth. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate you coming out. And uh, dare I say it? God bless. Whatever the fuck that means. Thank you, Esco, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Things, there's no telling And we just have to wait and see But I'd rather be working for a paycheck Than waiting to win the lottery mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think maybe next time, Brendan You should leave the fucking singing to me